does darkness cause evil? And when I say darkness, I mean literal darkness, aversion to the sun, no vitamin D, all that and more. Is that a biological causation of evil? That is the tongue-in-cheek tongue question being asked by Dr. Nicholas Hopkinson of the Imperial College in London and his 15-year-old son, Joseph Hopkinson, in the Medical Journal of Australia. They've written a paper uh, hoping to examine that maybe a vitamin D deficiency is the reason why the villain Smaug and even uh, Gollum are the way that they are. So he's looking at uh, Middle Earth and villains and their proclivity uh, to hide in the darkness only come out at night, and their tendencies towards evil. And also, um, not eating a nutritious diet. Right. Legolas is an example of good nutrition involving leafy greens and sunlight. Yeah, despite his paleness, he does get a lot of sun running around <laughs> the woods, uh, eating his vegetables every day. Um, and Smog, or Smaug, he only eats meat and only at night. Mm -hmm. He eats people who have some vitamin D in them, but it's all secondhand vitamin D. And he's a pretty evil dude, so, I mean, draw your own conclusions. And Gollum is the same way. I mean, he's described as the darkest of the dark, and he, he resides underground in the cold and dank area, and he, he comes out to the lake to feed on fish, which have some vitamin D, which is to be fair. I mean, it's not anything new in the literary universe to have your villains hide away in caves in the shadows and shame and darkness. But and I think what they're asking here is not whether that's a, a literary tool, but more is there a biological reason that maybe this is happening, a vitamin D deficiency. And it, it kind of harkens over to maybe seasonal affective disorder. Your, your mood is changed, well not everyone's, but some people's moods are changed a bit when they are not seeing the sun as often. Or in, and when people have poor diets, generally that leads to a more, more likely to be depressed or not in good spirits. Now the one, the one race that um, Hopkinson didn't address here, and I kind of wish he would, was the dwarves. No, uh, he did. He did? I actually have the paper. Oh, you the paper have the full paper. Oh, I didn't get to see that. It's, what uh, does he say about dwarves? Because they live underground. The dwarves also show evidence of a mixed diet, and importantly, although they like the dark, the dark for dark business, they do spend much time above ground and have plenty of sun exposure during the initial pony ride in June that begins their trip to the Lonely Mountain. And then he talks about the varied diet uh, that hobbits enjoy, as evidenced by Bilbo's bounty of food. Feasts and whatnot. Uh, I really love the objective to this, in the abstract for this, which is, vitamin D has been proposed to have beneficial effects in a wide range of contexts. We investigate the hypothesis that vitamin D deficiency caused by both aversion to sunlight and unwholesome diet could also be a significant contributor to the triumph of good over evil in fantasy literature. I feel as though, and maybe it's just because he worked on it with his 15-year-old son, that this is This is definitely tongue-in-cheek, by the way. It's not, oh, you're evil if you don't get sun, you know? I feel as though this is perfect to be on, like, a big trifold set up in a gymnasium for a science fair. Like, yes. Yeah, I think that I is not, that maybe a. not necessary, a, you know, a journal of science, but, it but also, a it also great big trifold. It also considers elves, goblins, spiders. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I wouldn't consider it completely scientifically salient. It's based only on evidence given uh, within J.R.R. Tolkien's novels. Um, are, are you saying that we've cracked the real meaning behind Tolkien's epic novels? It was really an educational Eat your vegetables, kids. To eat vegetables Be like and get Legolas and not Gollum.